For some years, third-hand smoke has been known as the residual contamination left indoors where smoking has previously occurred. We now observe that this third-hand smoke contamination can actually be transported by smokers or those who have been exposed to cigarette smoke into non-smoking indoor environments. To reveal this effect, our team worked in collaboration with researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry in Germany. As a case study, we set up highly sensitive instrumentation in a movie theater that can track the concentrations of thousands of different chemical compounds that are present either as gases or in particles. The results were surprising but clear. Each day, concentrations of third-hand smoke indicator compounds rose sharply with the entry of new people into the theater room. However, audiences for G-rated movies had minor effects, while R-rated movie audiences, being older and more likely to smoke or to have been exposed to second-hand smoke, released much larger amounts of third-hand smoke gases into the room. While concentrations peaked during their entry, these emissions did not fully dissipate, and in some cases, left a persistent contamination visible even the next day. This was very interesting because this observed phenomena explained how in the past researchers have observed large quantities of nicotine in a wide range of non-smoking environments. Despite no indoor smoking and good air filtration in the theater, we noticed that the indoor particulate matter contained a significant number of nitrogen-containing compounds from cigarettes. In particular, we noticed that nicotine was the single most prominent compound by far. So, despite regulations preventing people from smoking indoors, near entryways, and near air intakes, hazardous chemicals from cigarette smoke are still making their way indoors. And it wasn't just one compound. It was many different hazardous compounds known to originate from cigarette smoke that were well correlated in the theater during their emissions and were in the correct proportions for slightly aged cigarette smoke. Upon their arrival, people were off-gassing not just one compound, but a whole array of different compounds. This effect was not insignificant, as the emitted gases were equivalent to 1 to 10 cigarettes of secondhand smoke, and personal exposure may be enhanced in close proximity to the off-gassing people. Considering the known health effects of third-hand smoke, and the fact that concentrations would be enhanced in smaller or less well-ventilated spaces, these findings open a variety of important questions for both scientists and the public. While the theater presented a very good case study for exploring this effect, people actually spend 90% of their time in indoor environments. So, there are broader implications for non-smoker exposures to third-hand smoke in places like residences, work, and other social spaces that need to be explored.